Okay. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us today. Today, uh, Rosita Jimenez Lorenzo and I are going to speak about emergent multilingual identities among children learning Zapotec. Before we begin, we wanted to mention how honored we are to be able to speak to you today from our homes on Ohlone and Zapotec lands. So today we'll be thinking a little bit about fostering learner investment. We know that one common barrier to language revitalization is the presence of an ideology of contempt towards a language. And addressing negative language ideologies is often a key element in successful language revitalization. We used participatory action research in Teotitlan del Valle, Oaxaca, and this led us to the identification of cultural and community building activities that promoted positivity around Zapotec language use and supported learners in their emergent multilingual identities. Today, I'd like to first present a brief overview of Zapotec in Teotitlan del Valle. We'll then discuss the history and implementation of the Zapotec language workshops for kids in Teotitlan before turning to the motivation and reasoning for the trip to Monte Alban that's the focus of this presentation. We'll also present some of the project results, including multilingual student books and multilingual feedback from end of course surveys that suggest students responded well to the trip to Monte Alban and our efforts to promote multilingual identities. We'll finally provide a brief conclusion about what this can tell us about other language revitalization actions. So a brief overview of Teotitlan del Valle Zapotec. It's a variety of Tlacolula Valley Zapotec with about 3,600 speakers. A majority of TDVZ speakers are bilingual in Spanish and Zapotec, and according to UNESCO, the language is definitely endangered. Children are increasingly speaking Spanish in place of Zapotec, indicating a significant language shift. Despite this language shift, there are a number of initiatives being undertaken in Teotitlan to promote Zapotec. There are school courses being offered at all levels from preschool to high school. There's a community language committee, Dijbash de Gulas. There's also a community center, museum, and library that all display things and promote the Zapotec language. And there's also a community radio that broadcasts in Zapotec, Spanish, and um, bilingual programming. Until 2017, however, there was no programming specifically for elementary school students. Um, and for that reason, Rosita and I have undertaken the Zapotec workshop for kids that serves that particular demographic. So just to provide a brief overview of the students that we have in the course, um, we've had 19 to 24 students on average um, in each workshop. Um, the students have ranged from as young as four to as old as 16 years old, and the median age in each workshop was between eight and 11. The students show different levels of Zapotec fluency from native speakers to participants who have very little exposure to Zapotec, some who have grown up um, outside of Teotitlan and then come back to Teotitlan at a later age. And there are also different levels of literacy among students. So um, the youngest students are learning to read and write for the first time. Um, so when we have students as little as four or five, um, they have a very different set of literacy skills from the students who are 15 and 16. So these students were involved in the Zapotec workshops for kids that have been hosted intermittently since 2017. Rosita and I have worked together to host over 110 hours of instruction, um, and those instructional hours fall broadly into two types. Um, in one set of activities, we have students in the classroom where we build their skills in conversation and vocabulary and also help build their confidence in speaking Zapotec. And then in visits and outings, we lead participants to talk with native speakers and to learn about history and culture by traveling throughout Teotitlan and Oaxaca. We know that in language revitalization, language ideologies and attitudes can have a profound effect on language learning outcomes. And we also believe that we can't rely on learner motivation alone. Um, as Pavlenko writes, in reality, no amount of motivation can counteract racism and discrimination, just as no amount of positive attitude can substitute for access to linguistic resources, such as educational establishments, workplaces, or programs and services. So the idea here is that it's not simply about whether or not learners are motivated to learn and use Zapotec, but learners are not isolated and unchanging, but instead are responsive to their environment. So if they encounter a positive environment, they might um, be further invested in language learning. And if they encounter a negative environment or negative responses to their attempts to speak Zapotec, that might result in less learner investment. So as I said, we're focusing on learner investment, um, which believes that language learning is intrinsically social and language learners are dynamic, changing and responding to their experiences. 
Um, and we can define learner investment as being the complex, socially and historically constructed and dynamic relationship of the learners to the target language and their sometimes ambivalent desire to learn and practice it. We got a lot of feedback that uh, participants and families were interested in connecting language, culture, and community. Um, so as a result, we tried to focus more on incorporating non-linguistic content um, and also doing demonstrations of cultural activities and field trips to historical sites. Um, and so we wanted to highlight some of those. So some of the uh, cultural practices that students got to take part in um, included uh, planting corn, um, which is pictured here at right. Um, using uh, cochineal um, as a traditional dye, which is pictured here at center, um, traditional medicine practices, weaving and the use of natural dyes, and also the creation of velas de concha, which are these candles um, pictured here at left. We also took trips um, to different places of interest. These places included um, La Cuevita or Guia Blieschnoach, the Piedra del Tecolote or Guia Dam, Picacho, which is pictured here. Um, this is the mountain in Teotitlan, Gievets. Um, and we also went to Montelban. And I'd like to now pass it to Rosita so that she can explain to us a little bit the importance of Montelban. Muy importante que los niños conocieran este, eh, uno de los lugares, centros ceremoniales importantes de la cultura zapoteca en Oaxaca, eh, el cual es Monte Albán que es muy antiguo porque estamos hablando de una edad de 1500 años antes de Cristo, cuando en Monte Albán ya existía una población de más de 100 mil personas. Entonces, esto también es un poco para motivar a los niños de que pues ellos vienen de una gran cultura, eh, también de, de, de conocer lo que sus ancestros hicieron en este gran este, trabajo que se realizó en Monte Albán, Entonces se eligió este lugar y pues este, se visitó y se hizo muy bonito el recorrido porque se dio una explicación de lo que, de lo que fue Monte Albán hace muchos años y que todavía podemos encontrar vestigios este, presentes de la cultura zapoteca, como en el caso del juego de pelota o también la plaza de los danzantes en donde podemos encontrar unas estelas una capital donde estuvieron los grandes este, sacerdotes de la cultura zapoteca quienes también edificaron este, edificios muy grandes como es el, el observatorio y pues nos damos cuenta también que, que tuvimos científicos, arquitectos, ingenieros porque eh, esta, este observatorio está trazado de acuerdo a los cuatro puntos cardinales una arquitectura Eh, también podemos observar muchas grecas en, este, en Monte Albán. Entonces, por eso se eligió este lugar y, y se visitó y los niños también este, platicaron eh, en zapoteco, los que saben hablar y los que no saben, pues se les estuvo explicando cómo, cómo se dicen las cosas, cómo, por ejemplo, cómo se dice este, un árbol, porque ellos tengan un conocimiento más y a través de, de estas visitas ellos también puedan Este, practicar su zapoteco y, y sentirse un poco más en confianza porque de nuestros antepasados, de nuestros ancestros que, que nos dejaron, ¿verdad? Y que, y, que, y que hoy en día está ayudando a, mucha, a muchas personas. Todo, por todo esto es este, muy importante para nosotros dejarles una herencia a los niños que no la pierdan, que la sigan conservando. Más que nada que son ahorita lo más importante Que, que tienen que aprender y que tienen que seguir adelante. Es una opinión de, de aquí, de nosotros. Building on what Rosita said, in order to prepare students for the trip to Monte Alban, we really tried to scaffold student learning by preparing them for the outing with classroom content. Um, we went over place names and cardinal directions. As Rosita mentioned, um, there's a big importance on the layout of the architecture following the cardinal directions. Um, and in the classroom, we did an activity where we created a map of Teotitlan and places of interest using the online Zapotec Talking Dictionary, which is pictured here. Um, 
Participants were asked what places we should add to the map and how you would name those places in Zapotec. And we invited them to use the talking dictionary so that they could practice their own learning um, using a tool that is accessible to them both inside the workshop and also beyond the workshop. Um, in addition, before we left, Rosita also talked about the significance of Motelban in Zapotec with students. And so you were able to hear some of her explanation um, for us in Spanish, um, but I wanted to share some of what she uh, told students before the trip. And I wanna highlight some of the strategies that she used for making Zapotec input comprehensible for learners. Um, you'll notice in this clip that there's a lot of repetition. Um, there's also use of both Zapotec origin words and also borrowings from Spanish. And there's fluent code switching which really highlights um, Rosita's multilingual view of language that she's shared with us today. Um, and then finally, at the end, there's a review of the content in Spanish, asking students, what did you hear? Which allows um, even Spanish dominant speakers to participate fully in the conversation. So let's have a listen to that. Entonces, este, mi lado observatorio que Canigusú tuve a y rapé en cuatro puntos cardinales. Rapé en este, este, oeste, norte, sur. Entonces, bien trazado está en la Monte Albán. Quiero bien distribuida en la plaza principal y va en la que. Quiero que salga aquí un este. Y usted parte la este, plaza de los danzantes. Le que salga aquí un te en la estela la tejía, tejiera o. Lo que cago ya. Con, con sonar. Tenia. I also wanted to share um, some of the discussion that followed about the importance of Zapotec culture. Um, and so I wanna play another clip where Rosita explains um, the importance of Zapotec culture that she wants students to take away from this trip. Este, su autoestima, o sea, lo que sienten no se baje cuando vayan a salir a un lugar y cuando los traten mal o les, les digan palabras feas de que tú eres un indio, de que tú no sabes, de que tú estás chaparro, de que tú estás negro, no, porque hay gente despectiva cuando sales, ¿no? está, o aquí mismo, ¿sí? aquí mismo, aquí en el pueblo, la mayoría de la gente no sabe lo que somos, pero si te pones a leer, sí te vas a dar cuenta y te vas a dar el valor, ¿sale? Great. So then once we were actually at Monte Alban, um, Rosita led another discussion in Zapotec and Spanish of the site's importance. Um, and students were also asked to, to name locations of the valleys, cities, and buildings that were in their environment using the cardinal directions that we had discussed in class. Um, it was also a really important time together in community, building community. So we ate breakfast together and lunch together and then spending all of the day exploring the site and museum really created a sense of community and a sense of safety for children to practice their Zapotec skills with their classmates and families. After the visit, we invited participants to create identity texts um, following work by Cummins and Early. Um, and so we'll report on that um, in just a bit. Before we get to the identity texts, I wanted to talk a bit about the uh, end of course evaluations that students provided. So students were asked what their favorite activity from the course was and why. And four of 18 students reported that the outings generally were their favorite activity and eight of the 18 students reported Montelban. And I think it's really interesting um, some of the reasons that they provided for why Montelban was an important trip. One student wrote um, that it was really important going to Montelban um, because they learned more about the place and they spent time together. Um, they coexisted, convivir. Convivimos. Um, and so I thought this was a, a useful place for us to see how kids really did respond to that community building and the link between culture and history and community um, and language. In addition, um, I also asked students how they felt when they speak Zapotec, um, and one of the big themes that came up after the trip was pride. Um, so in this image here, um, the, the respondent has said, um, I am very proud to speak my mother tongue, um, and I'm very proud to be from Teotitlan. And we see something similar here. In this case, the child again mentions a connection between language and place, noting a sense of pride in being from Teotitlan and speaking Zapotec. So what we see in these two cases is that when students' identities, both as speakers of Zapotec and as people from Teotitlan are honored, we get positive emotions like pride. Unfortunately, there were also some examples of negative emotions. In this case, the child reports feeling bad because they don't speak Zapotec. 
I think this is really interesting because in reality, all of the students in the course can speak at least some Zapotec. However, not all students may perceive themselves to be speakers. So Rosita and I have moved to treat learners as emergent multilinguals. Treating students as emergent multilinguals um, allows us to frame language learning in a more positive light. And we know that the importance of framing language learning is significant um, and that it is particularly significant in revitalization contexts when language and identity may be particularly closely intertwined. Using this framework of emergent multilingualism, we choose to reject deficit framings of children's language abilities. So we do not see speakers as deficient speakers of Zapotec, but instead see them as emergent multilinguals with abilities in Zapotec and Spanish and potentially other languages as well. So thus we focus on students' emergent multilingual abilities in an abundance-based framework. This really allows students to rely on all of their language abilities and to use language in a way that feels comfortable to them. We've seen this have positive results, and I'd like to share some of those today. First, let's look at some student work. Here is the identity text that we created following the trip to Montalban. Students were invited to write a story about whatever they wanted, and many students chose to write about Montalban. In this case, we see two different stories. On the left, we see an example that is written uh, monolingually in Zapotec, and on the right, we see an example that is including some phrases from Zapotec, like Kubazunun, um, where we climbed up, but also some phrases in Spanish, like no pasar and una piramide. So I think what this shows is that by using a, an emergent multilingual um, view of the language learners, we encouraged participants, uh, both who wanted to use uh, monolingual Zapotec, but also students who felt more comfortable mixing some Spanish and some Zapotec together to create projects and to share them with the group. This also resulted in students using Zapotec in places where I didn't necessarily expect them to use Zapotec. So in this example, um, this is the final evaluation for the course. The questions were written in Spanish, but in this case, one of the students incorporates some Zapotec words into his answers. Um, and interestingly, these are all positive words um, like rating srute, um, everything was good, and wenka, good, um, along with uh, the word bisa, Zapotec, um, and a place name, kieles. Another important outcome of this project was that uh, community support was built for language learning. So at the end of the course, students read their stories out loud to their families. What I wanna note here is that this was very different from previous iterations of the workshops. In previous iterations, students had been invited to share their projects with uh, family members, but students had been very hesitant to read their projects out loud. But in this case, everybody uh, was able to get up and read their stories. And furthermore, families really stepped in to support students who struggled in a very positive way. So in this example, a student is reading their book um, and struggles to find the word in Zapotec. They say instead in Spanish, subimos, um, and an adult chimes in and says, subimos es pasuneun, pasuneun. And the child says, oh, pasuneun, and then continues reading the book. So this uh, support from the adult helps to provide this new term in Zapotec, um, and the child is able to continue reading his book um, in front of everybody in the group. One other finding that emerged from this project is that students identified as learners. In end of semester feedback, when asked how they felt about speaking Zapotec, some learners identified how their happiness was connected with learning. Um, the student writes, I feel happy because I've learned more. What do they want to do in the next course? Again, learning comes up, learn more Zapotec um, and do more fun activities. Um, and what activity they liked most, the visit to Montalban because they could learn more about their roots. Um, and this also comes out in a broader desire for learning um, that is also supported by parents. Um, so parents expressed a desire for their children to learn more generally. This included Zapotec, but it also included computer skills, English, arts, um, and, an interest in learning more about other cultures through future cultural exchanges. So multi emergent multilingualism fits very well into this identity as being a learner. As emergent multilinguals, they are uh, learning and growing in multiple ways. So what implications does this have for language revitalization uh, and language use more broadly? Well, I hope that I've shown that language revitalization is about more than language. Uh, I hope I've also shown that recognizing learners as emergent multilinguals can affirm their identities and increase learner investment. 
What we've seen through this project is that students are motivated to be part of a community in which their identities are seen and respected. So engaging in activities that build community and honor learners' identities can help support language learning and language use. Gracias and thank you. And thank you as well to everyone who has made this research possible.